five weird, wacky, and unusual things that might be breaking your fast. Now, before I drop into all the science, I don't want you to hate me with this video, okay? Just because I'm going to talk about some things that might potentially be breaking your fast and might be kicking you out of your fasted state, I, just, I don't want you to hate me about it because simply put, this video has been in demand. People have been wanting to know what are some weird things that I might not be thinking of that are actually messing up my fasted state. So take it or leave it. There's a practical application and a non-practical application for the knowledge that I'm about to give you. It's all up to you and depends on how you're fasting. But hey, you are tuned in to the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel with new videos coming out almost every single day. So make sure you hit that like button and hit that little bell button to turn on notifications so you know whenever I go live or post a new video. And I'm super stoked to announce this before I drop into all the content. I now created a bundle with Perfect Keto. So you guys have seen Perfect Keto in my videos all the time, huge sponsor of this channel. So first of all, big thank you to them. But secondly, for those of you that want to get the things I'm usually touting in my videos from Perfect Keto, there's a link down in the description so you can get your hands on the TD bundle. So don't miss out on that after you watch this video. Big thanks to them. So make sure you check that out. All right, let's go ahead and let's drop into the science now. All right, the first one, now don't hate me about this, is mouthwash and toothpaste, but not just any mouthwash and toothpaste. I need you to hear me out on this. So people ask this all the time, is mouthwash or brushing my teeth, is it gonna kick me out of my fasted state? The reality is we have to look at the big picture. Some toothpaste contain fluoride. Okay, obviously a lot of these toothpastes are starting to move away from fluoride because of some of the bad press surrounding fluoride. But the fact is the Journal of Trace Elements published a study that did find that when you consumed fluoride, there was a spike in insulin. So if you're looking at true definition of a fasted state, you're spiking your insulin, technically you are breaking a fast. Now, no matter how small it is, that's really the unfortunate news. Now, the other thing we have to look at is a lot of toothpastes use saccharin as a sweetener. Now, saccharin is one of the only artificial sweeteners that has been shown in multiple studies to technically spike some insulin. So we have to be really careful there. Like Colgate, for example, uses saccharin and they also use fluoride. So kind of a double whammy. But that's not the end of the world, right? There's a lot of toothpastes out there that don't have saccharin and don't have fluoride. So one of the main examples is like charcoal toothpaste. You can see that, you can find that in most grocery stores now. But a lot of toothpaste don't have fluoride in the first place. So you're probably fine. You just gotta make sure you go for those. I'm not expecting you to walk around in a fasted state with bad breath. Mouthwash, on the other hand, most of the mouthwashes do have fluoride in there. So just be really careful with that. The next wacky thing that could be kicking you out of a fasted state is going to be your vitamins. Now, before you turn off this video again, this warrants an explanation. Not all vitamins are bad. You see, when you look at being in a fasted state, you have to think about calories, right? So soft gels, like anything that's gonna be oil-based, like a fish oil pill or a lot of CoQ10s or anything like that, those are gonna kick you out of a fasted state. They're suspended in oil. Like a fish oil pill has like 10 calories. That's clearly a violation of the fasting rules, right? So we don't wanna be going with any kind of soft gels. Wait to take those until the end of your fast. But what about water-soluble vitamins? What about like a multivitamin? What about like minerals, things like that? For the most part, water-soluble vitamins are okay, but I don't want you taking antioxidants, so things like vitamin C. So be careful with powerful antioxidants. In fact, a study that was published in Rejuvenation Research found that when you were in a fasted state, you had an elevation in what is called the SIRT3 gene expression. So what that means is particular genes that would normally have you uh, increase autophagy within your body or increase the actual ability for your body to neutralize free radicals. You had an increase in it because fasting was exposing you to stress. So you were able to combat these things better because your body was exposed to it. When you took an actual antioxidant along with a fast, it killed that effect because the antioxidant was taking the brunt of the load instead of your body developing conditioning for it. So you don't wanna be taking antioxidants. You wanna be taking vitamin C, you don't wanna take vitamin E, things like that. So be careful with that. So realistically, why take vitamins at all during your fasted state? You might as well just wait until after you eat some food where they're gonna get better absorbed anyway. The next one is going to be xylitol and erythritol, but hear me out again on this. See, a lot of this comes down to what are you fasting for? Are you fasting for metabolic reasons? Are you trying to lose weight? Are you trying to burn some fat? Or are you fasting for longevity and health reasons? Because they all have different utilizations with these different foods that I'm talking about and different things that I'm talking about. So when it comes down to xylitol, xylitol doesn't seem to have an effect on insulin. But the journal Diabetologica did find that xylitol increased your blood glucose, which is kind of wild. Usually with blood glucose, there's some subsequent reaction with insulin, but not in this case. So it's a little bit wacky. So the point is, try to stay away from xylitol. 
Then when it comes down to erythritol, erythritol, well, it's interesting because 90% of erythritol ends up getting passed through you. Okay, it doesn't get absorbed at all. Now, there is a small amount that still gets absorbed and has a small, small caloric effect. So small that it's probably not gonna affect you metabolically. So if you're fasting for fat loss reasons, I don't think a little erythritol is gonna mess you up. But if you're fasting for longevity reasons, you're gonna wanna save the erythritol till your eating period. And that's simply because it's still gonna stimulate digestive juices, it's still gonna stimulate the enzymatic process with digestion, which therefore kicks you out of that longevity portion of a fast. The next one up is one that's a little bit obvious, but still comes up a lot, and that's coconut water. See, coconut water has calories. Just naturally, coconut water has like one to 1.5 grams of sugar per ounce. That's a fair bit. So if you're having a few ounces of coconut water, you're getting some sugar in you. And that's definitely gonna spike your insulin. So despite the fact that it's very hydrating, despite the fact that you're getting some good minerals from it, it's something that you wanna wait to consume until after your fast. So just be very careful there. And then the next one, and the last one that's really big that I get a lot of flack about all over the internet, is branch chain amino acids. Okay, I've seen videos literally dedicated to my response on branch chain amino acids. They make fun of the fact that I say they break a fast. The reality is the science doesn't lie. Even the Journal of Nutrition published a pretty broad study that found that branch chain amino acids, particularly the leucine involved in them, spiked our insulin. Yes, protein is insulinogenic, and it just so happens to be that leucine is the main insulin driving part of protein. So branch chain amino acids give us that insulin spike. Is it good, is it bad, is it ugly? It's really kind of none of the above. The fact is, it just breaks a fast. But again, that leucine, that amino acid, triggers the activation of mTOR, mammalian target of rapamycin. mTOR is like the opposite of autophagy. So you don't want mTOR to be spiked when you're fasting. It ends up kind of nullifying the effect. So we kind of have two reasons to avoid branched chain amino acids. Besides, fasting in and of itself is anti-catabolic. It's gonna preserve muscle just in and of itself. So no need to add branched chain amino acids. I would actually argue that by adding the branched chain amino acids, you're kicking yourself out of that muscle preservation state and you might find yourself breaking down more muscle. Now, I wanted to add an honorable mention here because it's one that I've seen a lot and that is kind of a funny one and it's Food in your teeth. Like people will say, well, I have food left over in my teeth and then I get it out of my teeth and I swallow it. Did I technically break a fast? That's, I mean, it's funny. You kind of have to laugh at it, but at the same time, it is kind of a real concern, I guess. Technically, it would break a fast. So my advice to you is if you have food in the teeth, just go ahead and spit it out. Just get it out of your teeth and spit it out. There's no need to swallow it. That's kind of rowdy anyway. So guys, make sure that you take advantage of the perfect keto bundle that is down in the description. Even if you don't need the stuff, at least check it out because they are a huge sponsor of this channel and they make this content possible. And it's not only a huge thank you to them, but it's a special discount for you guys so you can get your hands on some cool stuff. And as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here with my videos and I will see you in the next one.